Okay, today I'm going to do a video on uh, my Goodwee 5048 inverter, solar inverter with UPS backup batteries. Um, it's a great unit, it's been working absolutely perfectly. Uh, all the usual associated wirings underneath. We've got um, two arrays coming in, two separate breakers for the solar. One's on the east side of the house, one's on the west side of the house. And uh, as you can see, there's some quite heavy duty cables coming out of the bottom there. It's battery cables. Go down along here. And we have battery disconnect the current status of the battery and we have the battery bank which is basically a um, 5P22S lithium titanate system the LTO batteries uh, the original manufacturer is Yinlong but these were bought through an aftermarket company, I think they're GTK brands. Let's have a look down here. Yep, yeah. there we go, GTK. Now, they're marked as 40 amp, and I have seen on the internet other people complaining that um, these batteries aren't actually 40 amp but 30 amps with uh, a, just a sticker put on them and I believe this to be true so what I've done is I've ordered up some battery testing equipment and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some results and put it up on YouTube and let you know what I find because um, at the moment this only gives me a couple of hours of uh, UPS power which I've got hooked up to my fridge actually I've got two fridges um, got it hooked up to the internet modem and a couple of central lights and the cooling system because uh, we often encounter power failures when the uh, heat is high here in Australia and this year we've hit a few records one was, uh, I believe, 48.6 degrees Celsius. So uh, you want to have your cooling running. So all these batteries are connected in banks of five. And I'm using aluminium buzz bars. Now, I'm not drawing a huge amount of power out of these. So these buzz bars are probably overkill for what they're being used for. But I would always go on the side of overkill rather than putting something in too small and having it fail. The other thing I noticed is that uh, if you do not balance each battery to the next one when in parallel, when you hook them up they do give you a little bit of a fright with a little bit of a spark, but they self-balance out between the parallel stack. Uh, that doesn't cause them any harm, as long as they're not way, way out. Um, but, you know, being a few points out, no problem at all. Also, running the daily BMS. Uh, unless your batteries are in perfect tune from day one, um, I think they're absolutely useless. They have a great purpose, but... They do nothing to balance the parallel stacks between each other. Um, the design is actually for when you're charging that you don't overcharge individual cells, which I understand. So if you put cells in that are you know a fair way out, I understand that it's not capable of bringing them all back in quickly, but you would think that over time that it would uh, do so, but it doesn't. Um, so I'm going to be changing this over to a 
22S system and possibly adding some more batteries and junking this daily BMS and using a new active BMS uh, which I'll do a video on later. Now also when I was hooking up these batteries for some reason one of these rows was just really really low like uh, when this is before I started charging now it was so low that I didn't want to start charging because I was worried that it would do some damage to either that row or one of the other rows um, LTO or lithium titanate battery chargers are not that common at the moment unfortunately so I basically hooked it up to a lithium ion charger very small unit as you can see there and just checked it every hour and ran it for pretty much the whole day by the end of the day it had bought the um, bank of batteries within probably 2.2 volts of the rest so I was happy with that to go ahead and start charging and everything turned out right after that. Now these batteries are incredibly robust unlike the pouch cells which I've had problems with. Uh, the pouch cells if everything is not perfect from day one um, if anything goes out of alignment you'll find that they uh, swell up basically and that's not a good thing basically um, it ruins your batteries and it does it quick so you've got to keep on top of it and make sure everything's perfect and I would always run more batteries than less as I said with this bank I've been running a 20S I'm actually moving up to 22S uh, to take a bit of pressure off the top end of the batteries um, add a bit more endurance to them but more so just to protect the overcharge possibilities now now that you've seen this all set up it has been running for a few months now and it's been nothing short of perfect uh, one thing that the Goodwee 5048 does not have is um, the option just to put on any random battery pack. It's got specified lithiums and if you don't use a specified lithium uh, with a BMS cable basically you can run it as a lead acid and run it within the lead acid specs. Now I've checked the settings and made sure it has an over, uh, been set to overcharge the batteries and like I said so far so good. Um, yeah so basically you can run whatever batteries you want as long as you protect them separately from the inverter. Most inverters too these days won't run unless you have the BMS connected. Uh, this one does and I also noticed that pretty much none of them will run properly uh, unless you have your current sensor at the um, switchboard or where you feed the power in and out of your UPS circuit. Uh, you might notice under there there's a fan. Okay, just up here, which I've added in. It sits underneath the heatsink there. And what I found is, particularly here where we get quite extremes in our weather with the heat, um, the top, which has a beautiful big heatsink, was that hot that you could not touch it you would burn your fingers now it shouldn't be like that I thought it would have gone into shutdown but it didn't so obviously its internal temperature was still within tolerance so what I did is I put a fan on underneath hooked it up through a pretty lightweight circuit it's running off a 12 volt battery hooked up to a little toy charger and hooked up to a solar panel so basically as with all of my equipment I have extra fans put on them it's a little bit of insurance um, keeps them cooler keeps them running nice uh, and yeah so that's been absolutely perfect 
Um, what else can I tell you? The unit itself, have not had a problem with it. It's just been brilliant. Performs brilliant. No errors. Uh, you can look at it on your phone all the time and check with the, the little Wi-Fi stick that comes with it. Just download the app and off you go. Now, these batteries, I've got to say, I'm glad they're getting cheaper because I think they're the ones that I would use for any sort of home solar power storage situation. Um, the smaller ones, the LTO uh, pouches and little um, packs that you get, uh, I would not be using them in a, in a home situation. They're not big enough for a start. And like I said, if there is any discrepancy in the voltage you're charging, they expand, blow up, and basically, basically are useless. You can use them for testing, etc., but when you charge them, that gas is already in there and it quickly blows up again. Um, yeah, all the wiring that you can see, I've marked it all off as I've built it. Uh, I've used connectors there for this half this half. I run the BMS into the connectors then from the connectors I run off individual wires down to every parallel stream as required. Um, again this is a 48 volt 200 amp unit and it really hasn't done much to pull the cells all back into alignment as far as being close to each other although I guess it's been doing its job of protection because there's been no faults on this there's been nothing overcharged there's been nothing damaged I don't know when it disconnects or if it does um, the unit here never really gets hot so I don't know how much energy it's bleeding off when you're up near the top charge and it's trying to balance them um, yeah, but when you multimeter it out, so you get down there and you check the voltages, uh, they're all still a little bit out, but they don't seem to mind that in this situation. Now, I've also got it set up in a wooden rack that I've made myself. Uh, it's just something I started putting together and went, that'll do. It's turned out quite nice, but that unit there weighs over 200 kilos so you won't be moving it in a hurry. Um, the other thing is I do have it set next to the intake of a pool heater, a heat pump, so the air is naturally drawn through the batteries keeping them cool um, naturally on the hotter days uh, but they don't seem to mind temperature variations and I've come out and checked these when they're under load and unless you're pulling a huge amount you're lucky for them to get warm. Uh, again, I just wish that they uh, had more capacity because when I purchased these they were quite expensive and it looks like I might have got ripped a little bit on the um, capacity of them. So that's again the sticker that comes on them. I've contacted the manufacturer, they've denied any of it and so I've had to go about it by uh, ordering up some battery test equipment and I'll be doing the testing on them and letting them know. Also, you may have noticed smears of this black stuff all over the place. A little interesting trick that I found. Um, people are often mentioning how Aluminium bus bars are great except for the fact that they get surface corrosion. So it just naturally oxidizes uh, with exposure to oxygen. So what I did is I actually cleaned up every surface around where they were going to connect and as soon as it was clean immediately applied a conductive grease. Now this conductive grease uh, stops the oxidization and helps improve the contact between the buzz bars and the battery terminals. So I've done that all the way around. 
it's quite messy takes a little bit longer and yeah it doesn't look quite pretty but um, it's certainly keeping the uh, conductivity of them constant which is something you really want anyway that might be it for now I've got plenty of other toys and setups and hookups uh, around the place I'll be showing you over the next few videos um, thank you very much bye